What's up, y'all? It's your boy, B-Sharp. Welcome to Music and Motivation Mondays. Basically, what we're going to do on these blogs is I'm going to take a song, or you can even submit songs um, that you've been listening to or uh, subject matter uh, in the songs that you've been dealing with. I'm going to do that for this week. In the first week, uh, I want to deal with a song that um, has really been in my spirit and this particular subject uh, God has really been dealing with me on. The song is Pressing Your Presence and the artist is Shayna Wilson. Make sure you support all these artists that I share with uh, you guys about on Mondays. Um, check her out on Amazon. Check her out on Facebook. Check her out on Twitter. You know, support the ministry. So, uh, the subject that God has really just been dealing with me on is his presence. And making sure that I'm always operating and taking uh, my everyday life and making sure that it's in the presence of God, like I'm operating in the presence of God, never having to like conjure it up, but live there. You get what I'm saying? Um, and it's really, I think it's really been on my heart because here recently I've been in a lot of different situations uh, where it was a lot of emotion and not necessarily the presence of God. And there's no condemnation to um, anywhere that I've been. Uh, but I just want to make sure, and it's my goal, that we all have real encounters with God and we really uh, pursue his presence and experience God. And, and you, you get what I'm saying before you leave this earth, because it would be uh, a doozy to, you know, go to all these church services or go to all these different experiences. You know what I'm saying? And then just get sweaty and experience hype, but never experience his presence. It's a sad day. Um, and I think a lot of times we can confuse the hype for his presence. One of the things that you can really, uh, use as a, a check to see if it's really God's presence is if there's some type of a change in you after that experience, you get what I'm saying? Um, I'm just a firm believer that if you keep, you know, going in, but when you come out, there is no change there probably probably wasn't any presence <laughs> in that experience. You get what I'm saying? Or you didn't experience it. Um, and so you got to figure out why. I like the title Pressing Your Presence because it implies that God's presence or uh, the presence of the Lord is not something that we can just be uh, lackadaisical and pursuing. You know what I'm saying? But it's something that we have to have a hunger for. We have to have a, a passion for and be willing to change our natural posture uh, to obtain it. You get what I'm saying? It, it was something about the presence of God in the biblical times where you would see um, no matter what the circumstance or the roadblock in front of, you know, the people getting to Jesus, you know what I mean? The people who really needed to be in his presence found a way to get to it. I think about uh, the woman with the issue of blood. You know what I mean? If she touched the hem of his garment, that didn't that means or in my mind it shows me that she didn't just walk up like yo Jesus all right let me get down here and touch him no like she had to take a low posture you know what i'm saying and she probably had to fight through some things probably got stepped on bumped into but she knew that if she got to where Jesus was and if she was able to touch him and experience him you know what i mean the ailment that she was dealing with would be removed and that's what happened you get what I'm saying? If we touch God on a daily basis, if we experience God on a daily basis through our worship, through uh, reading the word, through daily devotions um, with him, you know what I'm saying? Those things that we're dealing with, God is faithful enough that he'll deal with them. If we really encounter him, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff is taken care of. You get what I mean? It was something about the presence of God in those times when if a friend was going through something, I can, I'm reminded of the story. Uh, where the four crazy friends took their paralyzed friend, you know what I mean, to the presence and or got them to where Jesus was. And because they couldn't get in through the door, they took the roof off. You know what I'm saying? And when it says when Jesus saw their faith, the man was healed. And so we have to have, we have to be a generation that has that type of a hunger, that type of a passion, that we don't want to do anything outside of the presence of God. You get what I mean? We have to not be uh, content with doing ministry with no presence. And we see it a lot. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, where people are so caught up in performing, so caught up in, do we kill it? You know what I'm saying? So caught up in, wow, he preached that we miss the move of God. We miss uh, what God was trying to do with you in that time. And see, that's what we got to get away from. We can't be the generation that pretends, but we got to be the generation that pursues, man. We got to really get after this thing and get in God's presence. Last week, I was reading Isaiah 6, um, and I'll post uh, the scriptures, but in Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, it talks about how Isaiah was in the presence uh, after King Isaiah died. I think that's how you say his name, after King Isaiah died, and um, he experienced, he got to see some seraphim, and they were crying out, holy, 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 the whole earth is full of his glory, you know what I'm saying, and basically, like, the found not basically, but the foundations of the earth were shaken. And as a result of that, Isaiah was like, man, I'm messed up. Like I'm ruined because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people um, who have unclean lips. And at that time, one of the seraphim that was flying around the Lord of hosts uh, took a coal off the altar and came and touched his lips and basically blotted out his sin and his iniquity. And freedom from the stuff that um, was making him feel unworthy of being in the presence of God. Now, what's tight about that is right after um, he was cleaned up in the presence of God, it spoke to him. The Lord of hosts said, um, who shall I send? You know what I mean? Like on our behalf, on our behalf, not on Bryson's behalf, but on, you know, the Lord of hosts behalf and who will who will go and say what I need to say and basically Isaiah stood up and said here I am send me and that's why I'm kind of encouraging you guys today is because we have work to do all of y'all have a purpose and a plan for your life and in the presence of God that's where you're going to be cleaned up and the importance of being cleaned up is because after uh, God cleans you up uh, not you but after God cleans you up you know what I'm saying and those things are removed and you know what? Thank you, God. I'm reminded that he's already removed all that sin and guilt at the cross. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So now I, I, I skip what I was going to say. And I remind you that we got work to do, y'all. So stay in his presence. Stay pure and holy. Holiness is what's up. You know what I'm saying? So be in his presence. Operate in his presence. Don't do anything without his presence. You get what I'm saying? Because God is ready and he's waiting for the opportunity to send you on the assignment that he had for you before you were even born. I hope it was something that y'all could receive, man. Y'all check out Shana's song. This blog probably didn't have much to do with her song in particular, but I just wanted to focus on the presence of God. Now, y'all go down there if y'all on the website, www.theculture.com, and check out Shana Wilson, Pressing Your Presence. All right, bees. We so fat, we can make the people say Jesus, and we can make them ladies say Jesus, and we can make the fellas say Jesus, and we can make the devil say. We so fat, we can make the hood say.